so in this particular space, there's just an idea to see how things juxtapose. I mean, in color, temperature, similarities or not, but also what they actually signify. We begin with the most meaningless painting here, which is actually the painting of Venice itself. It's called Venedig in German, because it's actually the bas-relief which you see, or which I see when I ever stay in the same hotel, Bauer, in Venice, where they have this bas-relief of actually the, the vessel that was the most important vessel of the Doge actually in Venice. I actually took, uh, because I was fascinated by this, uh, this thing in the lo hotel lobby, as I'm always fascinated by the, the sort of idea of a hotel as a temporary place where you stay. I made a picture of it with my iPhone, which turned it into copper in a sense. It changed the color completely. And in this sense, it has this sort of element of the idyllic, but also something that becomes kind of like retrieved on itself and nearly sculptural in, in a very strange way, but it has flattened itself instead of being a bas-relief in a sense. So it became a different sense of pictoriality. Now, I put this in because we are in Venice, which is actually this idiom of a city which works on your brain, which works with the memory, but which is also, of course, having uh, uh, is, is also kind of a postcard in a sense. There is this sort of reminiscence to wealth, luxury, all these things that are here. And here we are talking about a specific form of carnage also in a very weird way. Because this particular painting called Indelible Evidence is actually based upon a police photograph. And by the means of finding this apple, because it's actually an apple, out of which the murderer took a bite through the bite, they were able to retrace the murder who was the perpetrator of the murder. So I think that was kind of interesting. And here again, the whole idea of the lapelle, the idea of the skin, the corporality, is sort of emphasized as an object, in a sense, not unsimilar to the body we talked about, but in a more bigger-than-life perspective, because, of course, the apple is rather big in these proportions. Then you have a person that comes back in the show twice, downstairs as here, on the upper floor, which is and in two different time slots. Downstairs is a kid masked by a mask. Here is the real person giving a talk about his exploits when he was actually a cannibal. So this is Mr. Hasegawa, who actually was a person who studied at the Sorbonne in Paris, and actually sort of uh, invited one of his colleague students, a Dutch girl, to his apartment, uh, killed her and started to eat her. He was then caught by the French police in Bois de Boulogne with the remainders of the woman or the girl into suitcases. But uh, since he was uh, Japanese, uh, it was difficult for the French justice to do something, so they extradited this. His family was kind of wealthy and well off, and he was just disappeared for three months in an institution and actually is still running around in Japan now, giving lectures because he has become a cult figure. This was sort of like apprehended. He also played in several porn movies, but he was also sort of taken in or embraced in this, in this situation and a civilization. So this is another element of carnage next to the apple in one space, in some kind of a sort of unity of light. The light is another proposition in the painting which is important because without light, of course, no painting, no image, but also the light itself and the idea of tonality and not the full blast on color. Because tonality actually creates for me, besides the illusion of what could create space, and we're in Italy, so we should say perspective, there is another element which comes from my region, which is tonality, which barely doesn't exist in Italy. And tonality is an element of depth within the painter uh, the, the, the pragmatics of painting itself, in a sense. And this is one of the examples. And what you see is called candle. It's actually candlelight behind the paper that gives this sort of very strange aura of light that sort of comes out of the canvas and then also makes the canvas bigger or smaller. I also never paint on a stretched canvas, but only a piece of canvas actually uh, nailed on the wall. And only in the very last stage, this canvas would be put on a frame. So not many of the paintings, or perversely none, have the same size, 
which is also important because that sort of divides up the space and gives them a different opportunity to work in the space separately.